Alright guys, welcome to another beer review. Uh, today we're going over to Belgium for the first time in a while. Uh, I don't usually touch Belgian beers for some reason, even though I've had some really world-class examples, but I thought I'd record this video while I'm uh, waiting for my steak to rest. And yeah, pick this up from Northern Beer Temple. It's a bottle of the Timmermans Limited Edition Eau de Goose. And this was brewed in 2013 and bottled in 2016. Uh, it's now currently the 8th of August 2019, so it's had a little bit of age. Uh, not too sure when these are actually released, though, uh, because they are bottled quite early on. But uh, yeah, 5.5% uh, in a 375 milliliter glass. Um, I do enjoy the fruited lambics from Timmermans, who I think are the oldest uh, lambic brewery. And uh, yeah, picked up for a rather good price from Northern Beer Temple. So I've had, a, I think I've had their Cassis before, um, and another one of their freezer ones. I can't remember. It's been a while. I need to make a more uh, conscientious effort to re review Belgian beers, especially the more traditional ones. But uh, yeah, really nicely presented, cork and caged. So without further ado, let's get this open and see what we get. Nice pop there. Nice amount of carbonation. Had it in the fridge just while I bought it, and uh, I've had it out of the fridge for about half an hour, so shouldn't be too chilled. Using my Northern Monk Patrons Project glass for this one. So yeah, I can't say I've had too many Eau de Gerses before, but I think they're essentially um, an older Lambic mixed with a more recent Lambic and blended. Um, let me see if I can find any information. No, the world's oldest Lambic brewery. That's all it says. So yeah, I think it's basically just an older Lambic mixed with a more recent Lambic and then aged. And I'm not too sure what barrels. I did look up the description on Untapped a little bit earlier, but it's completely uh, gone. And uh, as you can see, speaking of gone, no head at all. Um, it's got a lovely sort of dark amber look to it. Nice clarity there lovely gentle carbonation as you can see almost has the look of um, apple juice to be honest so let's see what we get on the nose oh and that's nice I do that I do like the smell of a good lambic beer I'd probably say next to Gozers and um, Berliner Weisses <sighs> lambic just smells really nice it's got a little bit of tartness there, an ever so slightly wine-like character. A little bit of apple, a little bit of pear, that sort of thing. There's a very subtle musky tone there as well. But yeah, it's almost got like a very subtle banoffee like character as well. Oh, it smells really damn good. Um, I mean, one of my favourite Lambic series ever. Is, and I know it strays away from tradition, um, but it's my point of reference, to be honest, uh, would be the Mikola Spontan series. Just flawlessly executed. And, um, yeah, so to have a, a really traditional uh, Lambic, it just smells lovely. It's so appetising on the nose. Anyway, let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys. are so nice and subtle and balanced. There's just the right amount of acidity, just the right amount of sweetness, just the right amount of fruity tartness. I'm getting a little bit of a, a muskiness there. There is apple um, flavours coming through on this one, but not like, you know, the bad apple flavours in beer. There's a nice minerality as well. You do get the, because I'm sure it's aged in casks. It's so drinkable though. Just the right amount of tartness. And balance is the key with something like this. Because if you have one characteristic that's just way out there, it just becomes really unpleasurable. And just not a satisfying drinking experience 
And this is. This really is. There's an ever so slight, 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 slight malt vinegar aspect coming through. But in a really good way. Or like apple cider vinegar, I should say. But yeah, I like, I like the tang. I like the puckering on the lips. I love the subtlety. I love the very subtle fruity character you get as the palate dries out and the saliva comes out. Yeah, I mean, is it one of the most highly regarded out there? Like, it's not, you know, it doesn't have the same sort of reputation as the likes of Cantillon and Dry Fontaine and stuff like that. But for less than a fiver, I, I could happily pick up, like, four bottles of these and just drink one fresh and then just a few months down the line, maybe six months down the line, try another one, six months down the line, try another one. And they have the reputation for a reason. It's so beautifully balanced and drinkable and satisfying, and I think that is very important. Um, you do get a little bit of a Bretomyces character, but not too much. That is a flavour that I don't like when it's really in your face, just because it never seems to sit right with me. But this, this is lovely stuff. It really, really is. And don't overlook it just because it's like £4.95 or whatever. You don't always have to go to these like outrageously priced uh, trade bait sort of um, Belgian styles. Go to some of the more mainstream breweries who are, you know, they have that reputation for a reason and have a really good price point. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I've, when I was at a bottle share with Rob from Hop Scene, uh, hosted by Ross from Beer and Omicron at um, Beer Muff, they were predominantly Belgian beers, as you would expect. And it's just such a satisfying experience. But this, I'm, I'm happy to, to drink the rest of this. Take a little time, because I think that acid might build up a bit too much <laughs> if you drink it too fast. There's a lovely design on the, uh, the cage, and uh, the cork itself is really nicely designed with the Timmermans logo on there. So yeah, um, in terms of a rating then, um, I could give the Timmermans Erdegerza an 8.5 out of 10. It's so nice. It really, really is. Highly recommended if you see it in your local bottle shop. Um, I have reviewed a couple of uh, Timmermans beers when I was in Germany, so if I remember to, the links are down below. If you've tried this or any of the other incarnations of this one, then let me know your thoughts opinions. You know, you're drinking history when it comes to stuff like this. And, um, yeah, it's just so beautifully presented. There's a sense of occasion about it. And uh, I've got a feeling it's going to go well with my steak, which is going to be the next video uh, later on today, where I'm going to pair it with the steak. Because I think that's it's rested. That's a great thing about the length of my videos. If you rest in meat, you're okay to watch one of my videos. So if you tried it, or any of the other variants, or any other beers like this from Tillman's or the other breweries, then I'd love to hear your thoughts opinions down below. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching. I'm foaming at the mouth now as I'm speaking because it's drying out, but releasing saliva. But it still tastes good. Anyway, sick image out your head. Thank you for watching, and I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers.